Hey guys, welcome back to Peak Tournaments number 70. My name is Laird. I'm joined once again by Kodra. Uh, so we uh, are here today, Rock. Yeah, I accidentally forgot to uh, mute the stream, so I was hearing myself twice, and I was very confused by that. Um, so, you know, ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be back. Uh, I'm always happy. We're just going to be getting right back into the action. Uh, you know, not much time for an introduction Boy. here. Uh, it looks like we're going to be having Toon playing the Mario versus Dark Falcon's Richter. Yeah, Dark Falcon, of course, rocking the classic Richter that this man has carved a name for himself in this tournament and every other one of them so far with. And actually, Toon not doing that. Toon is typically the nest player here, but actually opting to go for Mario. And then Mario schmoves already. That was that let. Okay, the wall jump into Fireball didn't get them anything, but showing that they know at least a little bit about this character's uh, mix ups here so far. Let's see what they can do with it. So, uh, on paper, this matchup seems like it's pretty volatile. Uh, whoever's in advantage is probably going to be in advantage for a little bit longer than we're used to seeing. Um, Mario has the tools to get out of this advantage pretty well, but, you know, oh, oh, if you oh, get comboed like that... Mm, boy! Oh my god, that's it. That's the stock. Just that obliterated, bro. He was at, like, like well, he, he was not that high a percent before he got hit by that. But, of course, the classic, the the... The classic. I'm just gonna call it the classic because I don't. I don't want to call it the T3 Dom because he does a lot of those. But the classic Richter combo going to seal that stock out, and now Dark Falcon has a very comfortable lead right yeah. now. Yeah. Can never get go against Mario. You know that stock was taken faster than I could say anything. People always give me crap for saying Richter has potential to be one of the hypest characters in the game. People always think I'm crazy, but like, if if there's a Richter who's doing cool stuff, it's usually pretty cool. Yeah. Same with Link. But you know, I agree. Buy it. Anyway, here we, <laughs> here we go. All right, trying to catch him with that down air, not quite doing it right now. Tune is not really hitting a kill move, not necessarily. You know, people say, like, oh, he's struggling to kill, not quite. Just kind of hasn't really often to go for one of them. That's worked so far. Oh, but no, I think for the normal getup will definitely get you killed. And just like that, Dark Falcon goes up three stocks to one so far. And if it's looking rough, it's understatement. Back yeah, here, yeah, um, you know, good good on Tune to take that stock real quick, uh, use a little bit of his iframe to get into advantage, and uh, get that back here. The problem is, he now has to take uh, two whole stocks if he wants to win this without losing one, uh, which I don't know about you guys, one is fewer than two. Just saying. That's true. I went to first, I went to kindergarten. I can confirm that that is indeed fast. <laughs> oh no, and he got given oh, by the holy oh. water bottle. Dude, the holy water bottle. Man. You know, they say Red Bull gives you wings, but apparently Holy Water does the complete opposite for you. That's going to be it. And just like that, Dark Falcon takes an honestly insanely convincing game one. Like we saw, like, okay, it was he was up two stocks to one, and then he got the kill with the Gimp. But he still got the damage really up. He had a, he did Gimp him at around 75 with just pure neutral advantage state control, just everything. So you still gotta give props to a Dark Falcon is looking dominant against this Mario pick right now. Yeah, I mean, and, and I watched a little bit of the last set where uh, Dark Falcon uh, was able to pull out ahead of Key, uh, yeah. but like he just he keeps his calm really well. He looks for these opportunities to get an advantage or get these early gimps, and uh, I've I've seen a lot of those from him this evening. And you know, to be honest with you, I think that might be the X factor in this matchup. And uh, he's going against a character who has um, a pre pretty exploitable recovery at this rate uh, if you know how to work it. So, um, game two, the nest switch is going to be coming out. Yeah, of course. Uh, two and rocking the nest. I just, I just, this isn't like something that's like like a crazy play, but I like, I just think it's funny how that beer vs PK fire came out, and because you beer, because of the beer vs, you got hit by the. Uh, What's it called? The cross into the axe. I just find that pretty yeah. fun. That, that was pretty <laughs> Anyway, here we go. Oh, oh the magnet yeah. cancels into the magnet. Okay, that one's not quite gonna do it, but still. Looking good. Oh, he gets out of there. Already okay. looks like the Ness is putting you to work. Yeah, doing way better. I mean, you know, sometimes you want to go your secondary for matchup experience, but sometimes the matchup isn't all you're dealing against. Dark Falcon has a tons of mix-ups and stuff. He's a very smart player. So even though you might come prepared for Richter with the Mario, you got to prepare for Dark Falcon. And then in the end, you can't prefer to prepare for Dark Falcon without your main guy. Is, yeah, and you know, see, that yeah. there's... Uh... Yeah, sorry to cut you off there. That I, I've... Oh, oh my god, he just... He sucked up the... 
<laughs> I wasn't expecting the whole uh, holy water to be sucked up into that uh, psi magnet. All right, getting the nair. This could be the edge guard. No, actually, Dark Falcon opting to grapple on before and swing low enough so that he did not get hit by the nair. A great way to get out of disadvantage there from him. Let's see what else he can do as they both continue to roll across the entire stage in very weird and awkward fashions. I don't know why anybody would opt for that option, but neither of them punished the other. So, yeah. yeah, and there's that dash buff dash attack is going to be taking that, set, uh, that first stock. And uh, this is a complete reversal, never mind. Um, and it looks like we're going to be going back into neutral right now. Both characters at uh, very low percents and uh, just got another stock going through. Hey chat, real quick, can someone drop the uh, Hydra thing real quick? I'm thirsty. <laughs> but anyway, right now, speaking of thirsty, Toon is thirsty for these kills. You can see him constantly going in, you know, going for the thunder or going for the, the PK magnet cancels, the fires, everything in the ballad right now. He's going for every which area that he can possibly think of right now. He is hungry to turn this even game into his advantage because he knows you can't let Dark Falcon stay on even ground with you. He will turn it into something monstrous. I mean, you, you, we could talk about this guy snapping uh, neutral sets in, in a matter of seconds with, you know, just one holy water. And honestly, he could have gone for the stock there, but he opted to, you know, uh, sink back into the ground and get a little bit more stage pressure. Um, but he's, oh, oh my god, that F-Smash. The thing about Dark Falcon is I, I rarely see him um, overstay his welcome and, and like push his advantage further than uh, he's willing to take it. You know, he's, he's always in control. He always seems like he knows exactly where he's doing. He's placing his moves incredibly well. Um, it seems like his game plan is incredibly calculated. He's not just throwing out moves and uh, guessing. And I think, I think this well-executed, uh, very disciplined gameplay is uh, what's gotten him this far in bracket this evening. Yeah, I definitely agree. Garrett Falcon has a game plan and he intends to stick to that game plan. So here we go. Let's see if he can stick it on through through this lead and if he does not drop the stock here. Because you want this... Oh, oh okay. Awkward angle, yeah. Okay, that's... That's a funny. That's a funny way to die. Okay, that's gonna be it with the, uh, the not the PK rocket, but just you know the normal up version. Going to take out that stock. Man, he he uh, got smacked into the side of the stage, and I don't think he was ready for it. I think he expected to be sent uh, vertically, not horizontally, and um, wasn't able to tech in time, and uh, that was gonna cost him the stock. Yeah, I think so far one of the big reasons why Dark Falcon's been getting. All the advantages that he's been getting is that you can kind of see Toon has been DIing a little bit weird on uh, on the on, on the holy water. Course. You've been seeing him kind of uh, fall into it more when he doesn't need to instead of SDIing up and away like into the into the uh, the upper corner. And I think because of that, Dark Falcon's been getting a lot, but he might actually yeah. lose the game right here. Oh, he does. Okay, a complete reversal from Toon. He snatched that game from the from the clutches of defeat, man. Oh my goodness, so great. We want to talk about Dark Falcon's reversals and uh, getting these random gimps. Let's talk about my boy Toon uh, getting the down smash. Good, good neutral getup read there with a down smash, hitting Dark Falcon at a, a pretty low percent. I think he was at like 50, and then reading his DI yeah. perfectly, reading exactly where he's gonna be, and uh, going down there and meeting him uh, where Dark Falcon doesn't have a chance to change his DI or not his DI, change his trajectory and uh, snap to ledge with that tether. So good stuff there from Toon, uh, way to bring that game back. We're gonna be going into game three here. Already? Yeah, also uh, peak tournaments redeem that hydrate for you, buddy, so. Oh, thanks, hold on, I didn't see that. <laughs> Thank you, Jamin, love you, baby. Wait, don't transition yet, let me get the- He transitioned. Yeah. Hey, dude, I just wanna, you know, cue you in on something. The match is probably a little bit more important than what you're drinking. Got some more water. <laughs> Anyway, game three, we're gonna be going to town and city. Um, I think this stage is definitely gonna favor the uh, Dark Falcon uh, in this matchup right now. And that's just, that's just solely because he's a lot more space to maneuver around the Ness, um, a lot more space to just toss out these projectiles and that whip. And you know, if you can keep Ness from being on top of you, you can zone him out pretty well, like Dark Falcon's been doing this whole set. Uh, I think he has a pretty good chance to come out on top of this one. Yeah. 
I think uh, I think the the biggest reason that this stage is kind of um, it, it, I think the biggest reason that this stage works so well is that for for in this matchup particularly for uh, for Dark Falcon is that on Town and City you need a good like a, a good fast rounded hitbox whether that be your actual body with a character like Wolf kind of aerially flying at you or you know Victor who can just kind of control the stand the entire stage with his projectiles you need something uh, grounded and something long. And that's something that I mean, for the most part, because of the start. Excuse me, because of the startup frames and the active frames on PK Fire, you know, Tomb doesn't really have with the uh, with the nest pick. So, you know, you can already see it's been coming oh, a lot no. more than that. Going to continue, an unfortunate SD. Dark Falcon takes those. Though. Dang, dude, you hate to see it. And I want to go back to what you're saying with a uh, fast grounded hitbox. Um, believe it or not, Richter actually does have a little bit of those. He has the dash attack, as you're seeing there. A big hitbox is able to hit Nest. But I think more importantly than that is his forward tilt. Um, you see him kind of run in a direction and then uh, pivot around and hit that hit that F tilt. F tilt is really fast, really long. Doesn't do incredible damage, but um, it's really, really good at zoning and, and keeping opponents away from you. And I think that's incredibly strong option here. Oh and uh, also oh that holy God. water doing Dark. work, setting up these kills. Yes, you can make me drown. Hold on, one second. Okay, okay, wait. He has a lot of them, doesn't he? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that after this set here. This oh. is his game three. Oh my goodness, dude! If it, if it was anyone oh but Dark Falcon, I think they would have pulled the trigger on that. But Dark Falcon took his hit and was was happy with that. Yeah, like, like you said earlier in the set, he's okay to not really force his advantage to be pushed super, super well. That up air, not gonna do it actually just yet. All right, getting up. Oh, but that's it. Yep. You cannot normal get up against Nest, such as how you cannot normal get up against Richter, but everybody does. That's gonna be a lost stock, and Chun at least puts himself on the board here in game three. And we will have a comeback, brother. Yes, sir. And, you know, I, I, I do believe in miracles. Uh, I'm obviously wearing a USA hockey jersey from the 80s, so I, I do believe in miracles. But here's the thing. If you're I'm playing against suit. Dark Falcon... Hey, man, I like me some hockey, okay? If you're playing against Dark Falcon, you, you, you're going to need a little bit more than a miracle if you want to come out on top. You're going to need two or three because this man is dominating right now. Yeah. You're going to need, like... At least, at least eight miracles. That's like the minimum. Is eight of them. Yeah, so, you know, and you chat. know, it, it's possible, but uh, it, it's highly unlikely, especially when he's he's pushing his advantage this hard right now. Oh, wait, that was one miracle. That axe barely did not hit him and did not kill him. Oh. That's one miracle. But the second miracle will not come into play. That's it. The axe seals out the deal, and so the Dark Falcon will advance two to one. Over tune. Man. So <laughs> Dark Falcon playing 